Today we're going to discuss about topic pyresis, pyrolysis, ketosis, and gray's tetany. Let me introduce ourselves. I am Ising from Malaysia, and my teammates uh, Aisha from Bogor and Ririn from Pekalongan. So we are, we are start our topic today about pyresis, pyrolysis. Aisha, can you explain what is paresis pyrolysis? Okay, so paresis pyrolysis is uh, also called uh, hypocalcemia. So it is a metabolic disorder in dairy cows that can occur before or during or several hours to 72 hours after giving birth. So this is an incident is characterized by a sudden drop in the blood calcium levels from the normal amount of 9 until 10 milligrams to 3 until three until seven milligrams. Okay, uh, what animal that often has that type of disease? Is it only cows or other animals? Uh, okay, so in this case, mostly happens in cows. Uh, there, ha there, has, there has not been, uh, you know, a, a statement that this disease was found at sheep or goats. Mm. I see. So, does this disease infect humans? Uh, no, because this milk does not come out uh, from the breast, so it's stuck on the cow. So that is what that is what that makes the cow sick. Oh. Okay. Uh, how can it happen? So it happened due to the excess calcium secretion on uh, uh the excess calcium secretion and its failure to remove the calcium from its bone. So what are the causes that this disease could affect the body? So there are several causes. First, it was the age of the cow, the productivity of the milk, the cow's appetite, the nutritional content of the uh, content of the ration, the digestion function, uh, and also sometimes it was uh, it was like inborn with the cows, and also the breed of the cow itself. Uh, is it dangerous? Uh, yes, for the cows because it disturbs the comfortable of the cows. So how can we avoid that kind of disease? So uh, uh, to avoid this kind of disease, uh, so we as vets will give drugs in the form of Calcidex Plus, Calbro, or Biosolamine and Nofalgon uh, with the aim of giving the drugs so that the condition of the calcium in the blood increases with the addition of adenosine 3 phosphate as energy to support and nofaldin to reduce the pain. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, you mentioned that this disease ever happened in Indonesia. Uh, is this uh, still happens often in Indonesia or not? From the journal that I read, uh, this cause was first discovered in Indonesia on 212. Uh, okay, I think it's clear enough for me. Uh, how about you, Yisin? Uh, it's clear for me too. Thank you for sharing. Grass daggers is another metabolic problem that can affect cattle. To do with the seasonal spring pasture, days like today where it's cloudy, the grass is growing rapidly, but we've got it paired up with cows that are high producing and they're losing that magnesium through their milk and they don't have a big store of it. So we need to be there when these cows get magnesium and rapidly treat them. Now, I don't care if you're the vet or the farmer, you should know how to put magnesium, a magnesium solution under the skin in order to save these cows. Uh, because I have shared my information about uh, paresis purpuralis, I'll ask a question to Yixin maybe. <coughs> so Yixin, what is grass tatani? Okay, so grass tatani is also known as hypomanesemic tetany, latation tetany or winter tetany. 
It is a disorder of magnesium metabolism in ruminants that affect daily cattle, beef cattle, sheep, and goats in temperate region of the world. So older cows with calves on at food during winter and spring are more at risk. Okay, uh, what is the cause of grass tetanic? So, uh, grass tetanic is caused by deficiency of magnesium in the blood due to low concentration of magnesium in forage material. Mm -hmm. So, as the cattle hold magnesium in bones and muscle but cannot readily access this store when needed, the cattle constantly lose magnesium in urine, feces, and milk. Therefore, magnesium is needed in feed to meet dairy requirements. Like, magnesium levels are lower in cold season grasses and cereals than in legumes of wheat. So, high moisture content in glass can cause rapid uh, gut translate and low uptake of magnesium. Hypomagnesemia is frequently accompanied by mild hypophosphatemia and mild hypocalcemia. The concentration of calcium in blood is below 8 mg per liter. So high potassium intake relative to calcium and magnesium intake may also induce hypomagnesemia as it can reduce the absorption of magnesium from digestive tract. Stress during transportation and yelling may also cause grass tetany. Okay, so about this grass tetany, uh, what are the symptoms? So, in the most acute form, affected cows appear to be grazing normally, suddenly throw their heads, bellow, gallop in a blind frenzy, fall and exhibit several padding convulsions. And the convulsive may be repeated at a short intervals and death usually occurs within a few hours. In less severe cases, the cow is obviously ill at ease, walks stiffly, and is hypersensitive to the touch and sound, urinates frequently, and may be progressed to acute convulsive stage after a period as long as two to three days. With hypomagnesemia, tachycardia, and blood hauser can be observed. Uh, can we diagnose the disease or uh, if and if we kill with sorry and um, if we could diagnose it uh, how can we diagnose it okay so the diagnosis is usually confirmed by respond to treatment followed by confirmation of hypomagnesemia in the sample taken before treatment Tetany usually occurs when plasma magnesium is lower than 1.2 mg per liter in cattle and less than 0.5 mg per liter in sheep. A uh, normal bone has calcium to magnesium ratio of 70 to 1, but in hypomagnesemia calf, the ratio may be more than 90 to 1. Okay, so uh, about this crestatani, what is the recommendation? Um, what are the recommendations uh, for the treatment itself? So veterinary administration of intravenous calcium and magnesium solution can produce the best result. Subcutaneous injection of magnesium sulfate is also recommended. Two to three grams of magnesium is required to elevate serum magnesium from less than one mg per liter DL to normal range. To prevent relapse over the next 12 to 24 hours, a further 250 ml of 20% magnesium sulfate solution can be administered subcutaneously. Uh, as we know from your information that Christophany is highly fatal disease, uh, what can uh, or what are the prevention and control of the disease? So in order to prevent and control this disease, magnesium supplements should be prepared. Good quality of hair and slash are required to increase the energy and roughage intake. Lactating cows need at least 2 grams of magnesium per kg of dry matter. Therefore, high legume and high dry matter petrol should be given. Stress factor during transport and yarding should be reduced. 
one kg of molasses with one kg of magnesium sulfate can be dissolved in 20 liters of hot water and soaked in hay before feeding. During this period, dry magnesium oxide is applied to pressure at up to 30 kg per hour every three weeks. Okay, um, I think it's clear enough for me. Uh, how about you, Aisa? Is there any question for Yusin? Um, no, I think I'm clear also. Thank you, Yusin, for the information. But I'm a little bit curious about ketosis. And Ririn, can you explain to me what is ketosis? So another problem we can have is low blood glucose, which leads to ketosis. Ketosis uh, is a breakdown product of the fat that they, cows release as they're producing. So what we use in these animals is the dextrose. You don't need more than one bag per cow. If you give more than one bag, you tend to saturate her blood and all she ends up doing is passing it through the kidneys and out. So another site we can use, this, is a, this solution needs to go into the vein. So another site we can use is the milk vein. And we've got a great example on this cow just here. Um, you can see it following along here. Now it's the same idea. You're using your needle to go into this vein. You've got to be careful when you finish so you don't get a hematoma. Also be careful, these back legs, even though she's down, she can swing and hit you in the face. That's why I'm standing at this side of the cow. Last thing you want to do is catch one of those in the face. I mean, you can come around a little bit, but still be careful. Um, you've probably seen a cow in the paddock scratching her nose with her back feet. If that's the case, it shows how far they can reach forward with those legs. Remember, you're doing something painful sticking this through the skin. So you're aiming, there's the vein here, it's standing up, trying to push it under the skin, and look at that nice flow of blood there. Another site we can use. So if you can't get the both neck um, jugular veins, there's always this one down here if you drop the cow on its side. And you know I go. Okay, this one uh, can go in as fast as you like. It doesn't really cause a problem. So that's fl flowing in nicely there. Uh, be careful you don't lean on the cow's ribs. She's got to use these to breathe, remember? They've got to go in and out. Um, so you've seen the, the jugular vein, you've seen this milk vein. These are things that farmers can do. These are things that vets can do. If you've given a bag of calcium, a pink bag in the vein, the cow, most cows will get up in about half an hour. If you just give them a gentle nudge in the ribs, they'll be enough to stand. That'll be enough calcium to stand. If they don't stand after one hour, that's when I usually get hip lifters or a hoist, a sling, some other means to try and assist them in standing. About 80% of cows will be standing up within two hours anyway. So I'm running in this uh, glucose solution, the dextrose solution into the vein, give her some energy to replace what she can't make up for because she's producing so much. Hand in hand with this is another uh, drug we use called Ketol, which you give orally. So we give about 200 mils twice a day to the cow that's down with ketosis to aid her to get the energy level she needs to be able to stand up again. Quite often these cows, if they're down before calving with ketosis, it's called pregnancy toxemia and it's to do with them carrying a couple of twins inside. Now the twi twins are taking so much energy away from the cow that she hasn't got enough to do the normal functions for herself. These twins are basically like parasites taking the glucose that she would normally use. So we're fishing up our bag of dextrose here, it's all going in the vein. Um, it's important to get this in the vein rather than under the skin. It doesn't get absorbed under the skin, it tends to sit there. And you'll see uh, if you put it under one of these sites like the, over the ribs or on the neck, what you see is it tends to migrate downhill over the day and end up just pooling under the skin down here. Uh, not getting absorbed and having no effect on the cow. So it's important we get it in the vein. We're coming to the end of this bag, this uh, dextrose solution for her. I talked earlier about how important the milk vein is that we don't want to damage it. We don't want to get what's called a hematoma or a big blood clot around it. So um, as we pull up, we'll put up some pressure on to hold that off so it doesn't bleed anymore under the skin. We're just running in that last bit now. Here comes our airline, so we can watch it coming down. Squeezing that last bit in, pull out the needle and hold it off. And we'll just hold that for about 20 or 30 seconds so it's enough to stop it clotting. Good as gold. So uh, ketosis is basically a metabolic disease that occurs when 
the cattle or the cows is in several state of negative energy balance. So the cattle mobilize the excessive amount of body fat but cannot convert this to energy through the usual pathway. And the ketone bodies such as beta hydroxybutyrate or BHB are produced. And actually this uh, if this happen in small amounts, the cattle can be can use BHB as an alternative energy source, but when the ketone production is high, the cattle cannot use all the what is it, uh, ketone bodies for energy and BHB concentration will be increased in blood. And that's what makes the cattle may suffer from ketosis and it has three types of ketosis. Mm -hmm. Since you mentioned just now there are three types of ketosis, can you give a brief explanation? Uh, okay, so the first type is a sudden drop in energy intake, which can be due to uh, underfeeding or adverse weather events like snowstorms or floods that prevent the cattle from eating sufficient amounts of dry matter. And the second type is uh, post calving ketosis that generally uh, generally happens in uh, post calving when the cattle is mobilizing excess body fat to meet the uh, was it uh, demands of milk production and the last type is silage ketosis it is due to uh, cattle's ingesting poor quality silage silage sorry okay so is post calving ketosis was normal uh, I'm not sure if it is normal on or not, but in early lactation, all cattle are in a state of negative energy balance. So, the so this can be happen to all cows, but cows, but the magnitude of this can be varied. So, uh, what kinds of cattle are at risk? Um, cattle that are too fat or uh, in a BCS. Uh, upper than five and are particularly it's uh, particularly at risk. For example, cattle that calves at uh, BCS six are twice are likely to suffer from ketosis than cattle that calves at five point five. And then the cattle that have been over feed pre calving are also at risk of type two ketosis. Mm -hmm. Okay, so speaking about ketosis, how can we diagnose that this cows was affected by ketosis? Uh, because clinical sign may not always be present, ketosis is often diagnosed based on the level of circulating BHP in the blood to classify cows as either it's clinical or subclinical. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, how can we classify between clinical and subclinical ketosis? Clinical ketosis has flat BHP concentration greater than 2 mmol per liter, but subclinical ketosis, uh, the blood BHP concentration is between 1.2 and 2.0. Okay, so is there any treatment for clinical ketosis? Um, the treatment that have been used is uh, effect cause include uh, intravenous metabolic solution like for in one calcium, magnesium, glucose, and uh, uh, the other one I a bit forget, but and the other treatment is intravenous dextrose and multivitamin injections. Mm. So, uh, how to reduce the risk of ketosis? Ketosis can be prevented by managing feed allocation and BCS, both pre- and post-calving, and by paying attention to cow behavior and adverse weather conditions. Thank you, Riri, for sharing. It's good enough for me. Uh, Aisha, do you have any questions? Uh, no, I think it's enough also for, my, for, for me. So I guess that's it guys, three of the disease that we explained to each other today. Mm -hmm. So because there's no further questions, I guess that's it for our podcast today. 
So, goodbye from Aisha from Bogor. Goodbye from Ising from Malaysia. And goodbye from Lirin from Pekalongan. Okay, see okay. you. Thank you.